What is the Lutheran Two Kingdom Theory? Hi, my name is Ted Rosenblatt, and I'm here with my father, Dr. Rod Rosenblatt, and this is Talks with Dad Rod. <clears throat> I'm going to lead in with scripture, John 18, 36. Jesus answered, my kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then my servants would be fighting so that I would not be handed over to the Jews, but as, that, but as it is, my kingdom is not of this realm. The Lutheran perspective on things of this earth and what we would call, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, things of the heavenly kingdom mm -hmm. uh, are, are different than some other denominations, denominations which tend to treat all these as one sort of mixed bag. Yep. Um, <clears throat> even I at seminary got zero on this, certainly not a liberal seminary, but even at a conservative seminary. So I signed up for an undergraduate course in Irvine taught by Dr. Simonetto and the late Dr. Charles Mansky on the subject. And one of them asked me, what are you doing here? I said, you don't realize I got nothing on this in seminary. I'm Johnny come lately. So I was doing the work belatedly because I didn't get it where I should have gotten it. It's basically... Uh, ramifications of the verses you read where Jesus says to Pilate, my kingdom is not of this world. Were it of this world, my servants would fight. Two kingdom theory says there's the kingdom of this world and there's the heavenly kingdom. And Christ is talking primarily about a kingdom that's heavenly and not primarily of some earthly device or rule in this world. That's basically it. And the correlative is, if you try to bring what I've said about the heavenly kingdom into the kingdom of this world, you're going to fail terribly. And we're all inclined to do it. Uh, it's not exclusive in any way. Um, and he splits them on purpose, and, and says there are two realms or two kingdoms, and they're not the same at all. They may have crossed territory, but they're not the same. Um, and I had to do the basic work in that. It's in our confessions. Now, back in the days of the Old Testament, am I correct that there was this the Jews sort of had this view that that when their Christ came, that he was going to be a militant Christ. Abs absolutely. And, and lay waste to the enemies that had been frustrating them for so long, who had been putting them in bondage, yep. and that they were going to get their comeuppance. Yep. And that, and Rome, that God, God Rome was, was going to go. And, and God was going to come and wipe clean, and that yep. they were going to reign supreme over the rest of, of yep. humanity in some way. Yep. And so when Jesus shows up, and shows up in meekness and weakness... Mm -hmm. and then climbs on this cross, that's hugely offensive if your idea is that this guy is going to be coming in there, you know, in our in our way of thinking, it's like, you know, it's like a Jedi showing up with a lightsaber, so it's just chopping up all the bad guys. Right. And you're like, yeah, get him! Yeah. And all of a sudden this guy shows up and he's and he's weak. Uh-huh. That's not what the, they were, were yeah. thinking was going to happen. And, and we should learn something from that. Um, it isn't as if even with us, nobody Gentiles that's foreign... We think in categories like that, too. <clears throat> um, if Jesus really were the Christ, he would have laid waste to Rome. Well, um, the Jews thought that, too, and that isn't exactly how it worked out. And it worked out the way he had it planned and not the way we would plan it. <clears throat> His function was to function as prophet, priest, and king, but not in the way that we guessed. So let me go to the other side of the discussion, because our time is short in these things, is then does the Lutheran pers perspective have room for praying to God and having our, our prayers answered in this kingdom, even in, with those Absolutely. two categories set aside from each other. Absolutely. And for Jesus' sake, for the sake of him who died and rose again for us. Now, we firmly still believe that God answers prayers in yep. this life, in this kingdom, yep. even if 
We have every, every, he's given us the right to pray it. We wouldn't have it by nature, but he's given it to us in his son. We're free to pray on, about things of this world, of this. I mean, think of Luther's catechism, give us this day our daily bread. Who'd have thunk that? Well, if that's the paradigm prayer, there it is. Give us this day our daily bread. So we have a need here in this here in this kingdom. Right on. And please bring us the need the thing that we need in this kingdom. Yep. Because you are, you know, it is it is what is the great line from scripture, the great part of scripture. It says you open your hand and you satisfy the desires of every living thing. Yep. I love that. Yep. I can't even tell you what where I, I never remember where that's from. I gotta memorize that. But it's the sense of him being there in that kingdom and still delivering to us what we need here. Yep. That he sees our earthly needs. Yep. And many Christians don't or downplay that. Um, I don't want to go to prohibition, but an avoidance of alcohol as if it's inherently bad or other things of this world. I don't want to adjudicate that as if I were in ethics. I'm not. But we do tend to think like that, a lot of us, and we've got to be corrected by Scripture. Uh, Think of the wedding at Cana, and his mother comes and said, they've run out of water, I've run out of wine. And Jesus says, Woman, woman, what what does that have to do with me? Yeah, woman, what does that have to do with me? But uh, after everybody's half-crocked, he creates how many gallons of better wine than they'd had up to that point. This is not what you'd expect, but that's what he did. That's what he did. It's 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 a tough. I know it's a it's a it's a tough uh, line to ride because we pray for things and we get frustrated because we feel so often that our prayers are not being answered. Yes. And I think sometimes we're tempted to hope that there is this sort of mishing, mashing of the two things together that, that there is. Well, remember I said there is overlay between the two and there is, it isn't as if they're completely separate. They're not, but uh, he was the one that said, my kingdom is not one of this world, Pilate. Fairly clear. Fairly clear. So <clears throat> we bring this up because this is, it's becoming more relevant. We're going to do a couple more things on this, not immediately, but uh, probably in the next year, and uh, and try to bring the Lutheran perspective. No, no, normally we don't tend to dip into politics too much or, or current events and all that. We uh, we here as Lutherans don't see ourselves as, as trying to be correctives to the culture, mm-hmm. you know, culture warriors and all that sort mm-hmm. of thing. We don't, we don't do that. Uh, but we, sometimes some of this stuff does uh, inform it. Sure. I like that word. Is sure. is 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 from the, the 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 two kingdom perspective we can find in our theology that we get from God's word that we we can have our kingdom of the left existence informed by it. Right. In a way that is encouraging. Right. In the eternal and in the here and now, even though it's not a one kingdom thing. Yep. But that but that we do have a God that does love us enough to hear our cries. Yeah. And and answer our prayers. You're right. Uh, earthly needs daily, weekly, monthly, genuinely ne- genuine needs and he's opened that up to us. So hope this is hope this is at least helpful understanding that, uh, especially if, if, particularly if you're not Lutheran, that that you know, how we view things and and how we approach some of these subjects. Uh, we are uh, continuing to put this stuff out here in the fall here in 2022. We hope you really enjoy this content, and if if you really enjoy this stuff, we hope you would consider going to 1517.org and consider uh, clicking on the donate button so that uh, and giving and and joining us in this. Uh, donating to this organization to help us bring this message as out to as freely as possible to as many people as possible, which is the gospel of Jesus Christ died and risen for sinners so that we know that we are right with God for his sake. So come to 1517.org for more and we'll see you on social media. Talk to you soon. 
Thank you for joining us on Talks with Dad Rod, part of the 1517 Podcast Network. This podcast and all 1517's content is made possible through financial support by listeners just like you. Please visit 1517.org for more, and please consider clicking on the donate button and making a recurring or one-time contribution to help us share this good news in a world which so desperately needs it.